Welcome back to Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. I'm Jacob, and this video covers the topic of mushing. Now, the term mushing typically only shows up in army manuals because it's usually prevalent the most in a dive recovery. Uh, not a lot of airframes or other jobs find themselves diving as much as army helicopters, uh, especially as the attack and recon types. Uh, but, you know, some of the civilian um, helicopters, or depending on your helicopter job, you could find yourself in a stall condition, sorry, a dive condition. Um, so it's important to know not to get into mushing because it is a temporary stall that could affect your ability to recover that aircraft. Simply put, it's going to be a temporary stall condition as a result of being at high air speeds while conducting a rapid apt cyclic application. It's a, it's nothing more than just a stalling of the airfoil. Simply put, both planes and helicopters can stall when aggressively recovering from a dive because of how it affects the critical angle and the resultant relative wind acting on the airfoil. Now I'll use some explanations in this video that put, uh, or that pull from my dissymmetry of lift expanded video. So if you need or want a refresher on those or some of these terms uh, don't quite make sense, just click on the link, the link that appears either in the video or the description and I break down parts of the airfoil a little bit more. But let's get started. So quick recap of the airfoil. Um, let's say we got an airfoil right here. <clears throat> to be useful to the airfoil, the wind or the resultant relative wind needs to impact in the critical angle. That means generally on the front side of the aircraft or of the airfoil, the resultant relative wind needs to impact here to produce lift. Um, broken down even further, if I were to draw my cord line through the blade here, I'm going to have a few other regions that start to pop up. So we'll just kind of draw some lines out here. <clears throat> That's going to be the positive lift region. We've got the positive stall region, the negative lift region, the negative stall region, and then back here in the back is going to be your reverse flow region. So what I need this airfoil to do to act properly and produce lift is I need the resultant relative wind to impact inside this um, positive lift region to produce lift. If I don't have that, the blade uh, of the helicopter doesn't produce lift. If all of them are doing it, then I'm potentially going to be falling out of the sky because I don't have any lift. Uh, so let's look at getting set up for a dive profile. So prior to the dive, if I'm in straight level flight, I'm generally traveling in this way, and the resultant relative wind is this way. It's generally going to be inside that, uh, that positive lift region. As I start to pitch over and induce a dive profile. The aircraft is coming down like that. Now I'm in the dive profile. The aircraft is traveling in this direction, resultant relative wind in this direction, still inside that positive lift region. But let's say that uh, I'm done shooting guys in the face with diving rockets and I need to recover this aircraft before impacting the, the terrain. So if I pull back with a quick aggressive aft cyclic, my profile is going to change to something like this where the nose is high um, after you know, pulling up from the dive. Obviously, I'll, I, I don't want to go close to the ground anymore. Um, but what happens is the aircraft's momentum continues to push it this way, resultant relative wind pushing this way. And so now when I'm seeing this airfoil, the whole rotor disc, my airflow, the resultant relative wind, or the combination of my forward airspeed, induced flow, angle of incidence, all of that put together causes my resultant relative wind to impact the airfoil inside the positive stall region. Positive stall means there's no more lift being created. This airflow, if it's outside this critical angle, it's useless airflow. It's nothing but drag. Um, I'm not recovering from um, airflow or the airfoil is not able to use this airflow in this region. Um, so in this profile, the aircraft is now mushing, say, towards the ground. It's continuing to travel towards the ground. So you'll feel feedback in the flight controls and the aircraft continues its descent despite having a pitched up attitude trying to arrest the descent. Now this was talked about heavily uh, by World War II fighter pilots 
um, doing strafing runs in their planes who barely recovered the aircraft in time after doing strafing runs or they witnessed other pilots who were not so lucky. Now the same holds true for planes and helicopters today. Um, today, the FAA uses the term CFIT, or Controlled Flight Into Terrain, to describe flight conditions where an aircraft strikes the ground without any kind of mechanical problems. And that's what's going on here. There's no mechanical problems. This is an aerodynamic phenomena of the resultant relative wind just not impacting in the right uh, uh, general area of the airfoil. So how do you recover from this? It's important to know if you ever find yourself in this situation. Now the tendency is to clam up and apply even more aft cyclic, but this just prolongs the stall. This is only gonna make it worse. The only way to get out of this mushing condition is actually to apply forward cyclic. And this reduces the severity or shifts that resultant relative wind back inside the critical angle, makes it useful. So instead of arresting a dive with that much of a nose, nose high attitude, Maybe you have an attitude like this, where the, mo the momentum is still carrying the aircraft that way, but the airfoil is still getting that resultant relative wind inside the critical angle in the positive lift region specifically to be able to recover out of this. So recovery is gonna be forward cyclic, reduce the severity of the dive recovery. Now you should start to feel a little bit more authority with the cyclic and you begin to slowly reapply as much aft cyclic as needed, but if you ever find yourself mushing, then apply more forward cyclic, get the airfoil, uh, airflow back inside the critical angle of the airfoil. But the best fix is to never get into mushing in the first place. So how do you avoid mushing? Well, the only way to avoid it is really just to understand why it's caused. So it's, it's caused because of the aggressive nature of the dive recovery. So if you want to avoid it, use a slower or a more progressive aft cyclic. Um, now, since the speed of the aft cyclic um, is what is really a, a causing the mushing condition, avoid the rapid, rapid aggressive nature of it. All that goes to say is, with any flight maneuver, always allow enough altitude to recover. Um, keep in mind that at higher altitudes and air speeds, say if you're up in the mountains and the air is thinner, uh, the amount of time and altitude required to recover from these type of maneuvers is going to increase. So always think ahead. Um, the worst time to realize that you cannot recover from maneuver or from a maneuver is while you're actually in the maneuver. But that wraps up mushing. It's a temporary stall condition that predominantly is experienced during aggressive aft cyclic, most common with dive recoveries. Thank you all for watching. If you need more clarity on these five regions of the airfoil, uh, be sure to check out my video, Dissymmetry of Lift Expanded, where I break that down further. Aside from that, if you found this video helpful or informative, be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. As always, I'm Jacob. This is Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. Safe flying.